Good evening. Welcome to St. James Catholic Church. To our guests with us, we are honored by your presence and appreciate your participation. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, number 474, Holy, 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 number 474. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his ways and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy. To our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of the Lord. The word of the Lord. be with you. And your Reading from our Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? And they answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, my friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give the last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. I still hear some of you call me father. And I am a father. 
and proud of it and a grandfather, but I'm deacon. There's our father. <laughs> you know, we just heard the parable of the laborers called to work at various times during the day. Okay, let's be honest. Doesn't it seem like that those who worked all day had a reasonable argument? Why should the guys who only work for just an hour or two get paid the same amount as those who work for eight hours or more? It just doesn't seem right, does it? So again, let's be honest. It seems neither fair nor just, does it? So, is the gospel about fairness or generosity? Certainly, at first glance, the landowner in this parable is not being fair to most of the workers. Well, it could seem unfair if we look at it through the eyes of this world. That at times seems fairness as being more important than generosity. Even though the landowner paid those who work all day the just and equal wage that they agreed upon, they grumbled when he paid those who worked only an hour for the same amount. But the line in the landowner's response to their grumbling is what strikes to the root of the problem. Are you envious because I am generous? So perhaps there are some things in this parable that indicate that the landowner was using this generosity to teach a lesson. He sent four groups of workers to his fields at different times. The landowner had a heart that didn't want to see someone willing to work out of work. At five in the afternoon, when he saw some people not working, he asked them, why do you stand here idle all day? And their response was simple and to the point, because no one has hired us. He seemed moved by their situation and sent them to work, if only for an hour. When it was time to pay the workers, the landlord did something else unusual. Rather than start with the first, he ended with and end with the last, he started with the last group. For as Jesus said, the last will be first, and the first will be last. What was happening, though, was that all the others who had been working throughout the day saw this group, who only worked for an hour or so, getting a full day's wage. So naturally, they thought they would get more. Thought they would get more, but they didn't. All received the same daily wage. When this is applied to the ways of the world, 
It could seem like the landowner was unfair and unjust. After all, many people take great pains in keeping track of their hours worked and filling out their time cards. The claim of being generous would be lost in the midst of our bureaucratic ways, let alone in the ill feelings of those who worked all day or most of the day. However, when applied to God's relationship to us, it takes on a whole different meaning. The person who lives an almost saintly life and the person who lives a life of sinfulness and with no regard for God, who rejects, who, but who repents late in life or even on his deathbed, both receive the same reward heaven. The landowner mirrors the generosity of God with how he dealt with the workers with a true generosity out of love. This is certainly a challenge for us to understand and possibly accept. But the fact is, the message for us is to welcome with joy the repentant sinner, regardless of how long it takes for them to repent. It is a lesson for us not to worry about the length of time one has faithfully served, but rather to rejoice in all who have served, regardless of how long. So maybe today, may we begin to better understand the love and mercy and compassion of our Lord. God never gives up. He never gives up on us. And we don't have the right to give up on ourselves. We hear in our first reading the prophet Isaiah say, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. May we always trust in God. His love is greater than our most profound hope. So perhaps we might ask ourselves, what time of the day is it for me? Have I gone to work for the Lord yet? We're all united in one faith, so let us now profess our belief in it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by 
Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in the power of God's word to change our lives and to change the world, let us entrust all our needs to him with our prayers of intentions. For Holy Mother Church and all the pastors of the church, may they guide us to Christ through his holy word in scripture. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For govern government officials on the national, state, and local levels, that they may govern with fairness and humility to ensure the rights of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may look upon the poor, the unemployed, the stranger, and the unborn with unconditional love and welcome portrayed by the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life throughout the church, and especially from our own community of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters of St. Mark's Parish in Haiti, may we share in the compassion and love of Jesus Christ by our prayers and support for each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, especially George Lee Walker, for whom this holy mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. As you hear our prayers, may we always hear you ever more clearly and become more faithful followers of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask this in all prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 578, Lord of All Hopefulness, number 578.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess in devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Until 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that, what, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained. For your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace and love.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be singing our communion hymn, song number 638, I Has Not Seen, number 638.
let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just to remind you that the Living Faith booklets are out. Uh, those, those, uh, are, they offer daily meditations for, I believe, October, November, and December. I would encourage you to pick one up. It's a great way to start the day. It offers a meditation for the, the readings, I believe, that are proclaimed at all the masses throughout the world that day. So you can be united with, with everyone around the globe just by calling to mind those readings as well as the great reflections that they offer in those booklets. Also, we had an audio expert here this week um, who kind of tried to calibrate my voice to the sound system. Um, but someone messed with the sound system before Mass, so whoever that is, I would encourage you to leave that up to the experts. Um, I can hear a slight ping over there coming out of the speaker, and uh, we managed to get rid of that, but it's back. So we'll just leave that up to, the, up to the experts, but thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing hymns, song number 488, to Jesus Christ our Sovereign King, number 488.